Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today I'm going to show you how to glitch images on your Mac. So MacMost is brought to you by the more than 350 people that support it through its Patreon campaign. Find out how you can become a part of it at MacMost.com slash Patreon. So what does it mean to glitch an image? That means to take an image and distort it in some way by playing with the bits inside it. One of the ways this is done is to actually take the image into an audio editor and then adjust the bits there like it's a piece of audio and then save it back out as an image. It sounds crazy and it kind of is but it creates some interesting artistic effects. So let's look at how to do it. So here I've got an image, just a regular JPEG image that I pulled out of my photo library. Now I want to convert it to a format that will work with glitching. JPEG is a compressed image format and compression means that if I mess with the bits in it it's just going to corrupt the file and it will be unreadable. So I want to convert it to either a bitmap, a BMP, or a TIFF file, T-I-F-F. TIFF I find works best. Unfortunately using apps like Acorn or Pixelmator, converting as a TIFF and then glitching it just ends up with an unusable file. Doing it in Photoshop seems to be the way to do it although I did find one website that had a converter that was free that also worked. So let's go and take this JPEG image and bring it into Photoshop. And now it opens up in Photoshop and all I want to do with it in Photoshop is save it as a TIFF image. So I'm going to save as, not export, but save as TIFF. It's going to give me a bunch of options. I want to make sure image compression is set to none. If I use compression this won't work. Now as far as some of these other things are concerned you could play around with these and the glitching will work differently. I'll hit OK and it'll save out and I have a TIFF image here on the desktop. So of all the online converters I tried a lot didn't work as well but I was able to go and use the one at onlineconverter.com for free. Uh, choose the file. Uh, get the JPEG there. Um, go to Convert. And it automatically downloaded the image. And then I ended up with a file that was also usable. So that's an option if you don't have Photoshop. Now we need an audio editor. The most popular audio editor is probably Audacity. It allows you to directly edit the audio. GarageBand is great for editing and stuff like that but you can't manipulate things the same way as you do here in Audacity. So Audacity usually starts off with a blank document. If you don't have one just go to New and it creates a blank document. Now we want to go to File, Import, Raw Data. And then we're going to select the TIFF file and we're going to set the import options to ULAW. These other options won't stream the bytes in, in the right way. You want it basically to go from the top left down to the bottom right in terms of the bit order for everything in the file. ULAW is one of the formats that does that. If you get asked the number of channels I find it's useful to go to Mono. Uh, it seems to get the best results. And now I'm going to import it in. And now I get an audio file here. I can click the Fit Project to Window With and see the entire audio file. If you press the Play button it will try to play the image as a sound and it's a horrible sound. It sounds kind of like something trying to eat your soul from the inside. The sound will haunt you in your nightmares. It's not easy to forget so whatever you do don't press play. Now let's test it out by not glitching it. We're just going to go and do an export right away. We're going to export as audio. And then we're going to save it as, we'll call it City Glitch. We'll save it as a TIFF file. So we're going to give it a fake file extension because obviously an audio app is not going to want to save an image type file. We're going to save it out as other uncompressed file. We're going to set the header to raw headerless. And encoding we're going to set it to ULAW which is what we used at the beginning. So this has to match what we imported it as. And using those settings if we save it out we're going to get a warning saying hey you're trying to save it as a TIFF. Okay. Uh, we'll say yes. It's going to ask if we want to add any audio metadata. No. And now we have it saved out. If we look here on the desktop we see we have the glitch TIFF file. And if I look at it it actually does change some things. So just passing it through Audacity creates some sort of weird green 
effect on here. Now let's go back to the file. We haven't closed it and let's glitch it. Now when we glitch it we want to select some of the sound. It's important not to select everything because there's some bits of information that are important at the beginning and at the end. So you don't want to change those. So I'm going to select from near the beginning to near the end. And once I've selected that area I'm going to go to Effects and choose an effect. Now not all effects will work. Matter of fact most won't. Most will corrupt the image. That's because they're going to add extra bytes or subtract them and the file size won't be right and everything won't match and it's just going to be a corrupt image. But some things will actually just replace the different bytes like reverb. So reverb isn't going to change the file size at all. It's just going to manipulate all of the bytes in there. And there's a ton of options for reverb. I'm going to use the default reverb options here just as an example because it creates a great effect. So I'll say OK. It's going to apply the reverb to the data. Now I'll go through Export and I'll do Export Audio. It's going to remember my settings. Uncompressed files, raw, ulaw. I'm going to save it out and then it's going to export that out. I'm going to hide this. And now I get this new file. If I open it up in preview you could see this is what we're looking for. This is a great example of a glitched image that looks kind of weird and artistic and things are distorted. So now you can play around with other effects. right? You can try all the different settings for reverb. You can try some of the different ones. You're going to end up with a lot of corrupted images that won't work but in experimenting you might discover something really cool. You can also only glitch sections of the image. So back here in the file I'm going to undo the reverb. And instead of reverbing the whole thing I'm going to take a section here and I am going to go to Effect and repeat Reverb Effect just for that section. Then another section and then repeat Reverb. You can say I can use Command R for it. So I can do it even smaller sections without it being too difficult. So now I've just done some sections here. So now let's export. And now the result glitches only pieces of it. So you can see that's kind of cool. At least some sections kind of unaffected, other sections affected. You can see the three sections here that I glitched. You can create smaller ones and do all sorts of things. So it's all about experimentation. You experiment with different effects, doing it on different sections, exporting, you end up with a lot of images that just won't open, and then you just undo, you go back to a working version of it, and then you try different things to create all sorts of weird and interesting effects. When you press play it sounds like the bits in the file are crying out please delete us and put us out of our misery.